folks, welcome back. Chasing Kojima, episode three, here with me. Still haven't caught him. Still, Still haven't caught him. You know, I had the tip of his shirt in my fingers, but he's a fast runner. Mm. Uh, uh, we're back uh, here to talk about, uh, it's kind of a roundup, uh, mostly because Ian Gibson uh, is an insane person and just posts uh, Kojima tweets all day. Um, so we're going to run through a bunch of those. Uh, I'm happy to be back. We haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, let me introduce Zach, yeah. Zach Schneider's here. Hey, that's, it's been a while. Kept uh, you waiting, huh? Yeah, kept <laughs> kept all of us waiting. I've kept myself busy, actually. Uh, I've had some light reading. Oh. Uh, the Death Stranding books wow. uh, have really kept me entertained. Um, actually, I haven't touched these because uh, I think oh. for Extra Life, we're going to do... Uh, every donation or something, we read a page, oh. um, and that's going to be a nightmare. I'm really yeah. bummed. The last Extra Life, Chris, Ian, and I read the Sniper Wolf scene from MGS1 at oh. like 11.30 at night, and there's no uh -huh. record of it because YouTube or Twitch didn't save the VOD. Oh. Or YouTube didn't save the VOD. I forget which one. Um, absolutely brutal yeah I'm, I'm still pissed about that um yeah there's a lot of news to talk about um do you know what today is actually i just found this out mere minutes ago as far as like kojima news yeah uh it's <laughs> let's say 10 days before 9-11 <laughs> Because he, uh, he referenced 9-11. I know, I know he does. I know you're not just making a 9-11 joke out of nowhere <laughs> on this podcast. Um, no, it's actually the sixth year anniversary of Metal Gear Solid V's release. Ah, I was going to say, I don't know if you also heard, uh, they're taking down the offline fun online functionality for that game. For I th MGS5. I, I just saw PlayStation 3 was being taken down, but is everything being taken down? I think it's, I think it's everything now. Wow. I, I installed that game like three weeks ago and was just going through mm. some missions again because I forget why I, someone was talking about it a bunch and I was like, oh, I kind of want to play through missions again. Mm. And I, I played for a little bit and I was like, oh, I should try to like upgrade my base and all of the th missions were like four days for like mm -hmm. sending your people out. And I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like doing this. <laughs> I'll just not. <laughs> Uh, I think it's going to be longer before I replay through all those games again. Um, but yeah, fan of pain. Yeah. Really good. I just wish they'd make more games in that engine, but yeah, probably what? won't. Was that the only game in that engine? Uh, so, I mean, technically that engine is the engine used for, uh, Oh wait, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. It was the only, only game made in Fox die. Well, I guess, I guess, uh, what is it? Metal gear. Uh, oh, survive! Whatever the survive, yeah, yeah. I never touched that, um, mostly because it looked bad, and Jeff Gersman said it was bad, so yeah. I didn't touch it. Um, we should, if that's still online, we should play that one day. That's not a bad stream idea. As shits, I'm sure we can get it for like five bucks. Yeah, it's probably pretty cheap. Um, oh, that's a good. I gotta write all this down because I want to do a bunch of one-off episodes, but mm. um, I just keep. Oh, now that um, now that you mentioned that, I had Googled uh, Metal Gear Solid Five to see the release date. So this says Phantom Pain's online service for PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Yeah, I was just saying I was I was wrong. It's just the the old gen, the old um, old gen, not old gen. <laughs> beginning today, players will no longer be able to make purchases within the game. Metal Gear Online related DLC will be withdrawn on the thirtieth, but I assume that still means just on the Three Hundred and Sixty and PS Three. Yeah, that's that's my understanding of it. Um, yeah, they it's hit wild that, to think that that game ran on that hardware. I, I, just, I, it like caught me off guard because I thought it was a PS4 exclusive. and Xbox One exclusive. Yeah, um, yeah, that's super weird. I mean, I remember playing it on on the PlayStation Four because it was right when I moved to New York. It like just came out like the day after I moved, and I didn't even have like furniture bought yet. Wow! But I was like sitting and like playing it, and I was like, "Damn, this game's so fucking good." When I first moved here, I sat on my air air mattress uh, with my tiny desk because I hadn't gotten bought furniture yet. And I hooked mm -hmm. up my computer and I downloaded the Mass Effect games and modded them for like 
four hours Ooh. and then started a game and then was like, I don't feel like playing Mass Effect, <laughs> 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 which happens every time. Um, so let me dive into the news here. Um, first mm. of all, I want to hit the big news right out the gate. Happy birthday to Hideo Kojima. Turned 58 on August 23rd. Um, that man does not age. Um, no. It's quite disturbing. So it's uh, wild to think he's like almost twice as old as me. 58? 20, yeah. I'm 26. So, You're 26? Yeah. You're a baby. I know. You baby. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, I'm almost 27, though, actually. I'm 26 and three quarters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm 27 in seven days, so... <laughs> I should just say I'm 27. I have health insurance and everything. It's great. I'm glad. Um, Me too. Yeah. So I, his tweet here, I don't know if it's the translation, but it's incredibly dark because he's like turning 58 years old today. And although my body is failing me, my creativity is not waning yet. My body which, is failing me. I know. I just want to read he's it. Got, and he, <laughs> he's got the Fox die virus. Yeah. Huh, my body is failing me. Um, until my brain loses its creative power, I'll continue to strive to create things. That's my instinct, and that's what I love to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kojima. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Hideo. Also, you can see his phone in a reflection of his sunglasses. And I also realized, I think he has the same sunglasses as Ian Gibson, which is oh, that's just the worst. disturbing. It's just uh, the worst. I don't like to know that. Um, no. Another tweet here from August 20th. This was before it. Kind of make me want to create another adventure game. Uh, no idea what he's mm. referring to. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait. This was just a complete non sequitur. Uh, kind of make me want to create another adventure, <laughs> adventure game. Kind of make me... <laughs> Kind of want to, kind of make me want to lose my mind. And the next tweet underneath it, the top reply tweet to him is uh, "Dino Crisis PlayStation the best" in Arabic, it, with the Arabic oh. cover for Dino Crisis. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why. I just this is a rabbit hole from these Kojima tweets. He had nothing to do with Dino Crisis. I don't think he had anything to do with Dino Crisis. That's wild. I mean, I bet he would make a good Dino Crisis game. Oh, that's true. Oh, they make a great Resident Evil game. Another yeah. great reply here. Finish your game first called Abandoned, a.k.a. Silent Hill. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. oh. Have we ever talked about that on this show? I think we talked about it on the, the last episode. I think we covered it I a mean, little bit. The blue box. Just, everything. Yeah, just those people... I'm I'm so split on feeling bad for them and being like, well, you kind of made this. Yeah. You made your bed, now you got to lie in it yeah. kind of way. I, <sighs> yeah. Um, the other thing that came out recently, which we covered a little bit on the last episode when it was first announced, but the Death Stranding director's cut, they did a lot more footage of that and everything. There's like new, brand new missions, everything. I'm thinking when that comes out, um, I can double check because I, I have a finished save for that game, which they say you can just transfer the save over. So oh, nice. we'll probably I'll probably load it up and have you watch me play it, and we'll try to do all the new stuff. The cool thing, like, at yeah. least test out all the new stuff. I will say one thing I do really like about that director's cut is how cheap it is. If you've already yeah, bought the game, ten bucks. Ten bucks. That's incredible. Versus, I mean, I was gonna say versus the Sushima one, which is thirty bucks, but I feel like the Sushima one is a whole nother campaign, so it's like, of course, yeah. it's a little bit more pricey, but also I've already paid for the game. Yeah, but like I, what was it? The 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 amount of things that they're saying are in this seems substantial to me. Uh, I mean, of course, there's like I, I don't think there's a lot of like new story stuff, but like a lot of new other stuff in this. So I I. I, I would I think in a normal world you could charge more for that but yeah the one update I wanted to the director's cut was being able to listen to music while you're walking around which people still aren't sure about because uh, Hideo tweeted you can listen to them in your private room referring to eight new songs uh, you can play them uh -huh. in construction you can also play them on the road while crossing the continent however if the tune doesn't match the delivery it won't play on the road 
Now, so you're supposed to remember what songs played during what deliveries, and then you can still play them again. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Kojima, what are you thinking? Right I now? like, Come on. I like low Let roar. Me listen to but... NPR. <laughs> <laughs> See that I, it's weird too because in, uh, in uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, you could listen to them wherever. Yeah. But it makes me wonder if there's licensing differences between being able to play a song whenever and being able to play a song in specific mm. moments. But I feel like when Here's you license a song, you license a song yeah. to use it however you want. From from what I understand of licensed music and games, which I did do a video on it, but like I'm again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, that doesn't hold water, but it seems more of just like a, a conscious choice by Hideo to be like, nah. This doesn't fit the right mood. I only want you to listen to this music in the way I want you to to listen to it, which is a weird choice, but, you know. Yeah. Kojima um, Kojima. Yeah, of course he is. Um, and finally, uh, let's get to the biggest news uh, that oh, yeah. is kind of the main discussion here, which was um, Norman Reedus in an interview with, um, is it Adore? Adoro Cinema? Uh, it is in not the language of me, but Portuguese. Uh, oh. He quote, I think we're doing a second Death Stranding. The game is in negotiations now. So dot, dot, dot. Yay. Um, <laughs> let me take in a lot of ways from a voice actor, mocap yeah. actor, which is he's probably talked to Kojima about doing another Death Stranding. I mm. wonder even if they said Death Stranding or perhaps another game. Just another game. Um, I think a game in that universe, another game in that universe could be really cool. It's a cool place. I mean, we've talked about this ad infinitum. The story mm -hmm. is not great in that first game. It's a <laughs> lot of stuff that can be fixed about that game. Um, yes. I don't think it's as bad as everyone makes it out to be, but mm -hmm. also it's disappointing coming from someone like Hideo Kojima. Um, I think a second game especially after a proof of concept and if they have some more money could turn out to be really cool. Um, I think just expanding on everything they've done in death stranding and make it more of a tight story. So rather than this mm -hmm. like overarching crossing the country sort of thing, maybe make it a, not that metal gear is focused, but more like levels <laughs> and you're playing yeah. through a, a campaign sort of thing. Um, I don't know. You have any ideas? I'm just trying to think how they would make that work. I think, I think at this point kind of the genie's out of the bottle with him and like open world games. I think that's kind of, if he's going to do a game in this style, I think that's what he wants to do. Um, how to make a death stranding to work. Uh, I mean, it's the thing where if Norman Reedus is in talks or is aware of, potential talks for this you would assume sam porter bridges is involved uh i would assume oh, i don't know maybe as the main character but part of me hopes not just to expand more what's going on in europe i don't know uh that could be interesting <laughs> yeah that's maybe true. japan i, I uh, even think like maybe a game leading up to the death stranding would be cool hmm like if there was like some sort of war or something that led to it or like the, the game ends with the moment that like the death stranding happens, mm. I think would be neat. Do we, do we know what the, the origin of the death stranding? It's been a while since I've played it. So sorry to put you on the spot. If you also don't remember, um, as far as I can remember, um, what does it say here? Uh, mysterious explosions have rocked the planet, setting off a series of supernatural phenomena known as the Death Stranding. Spectral okay. creatures that devour the living have pushed humanity to the brink of extinction, causing countries to fall and survivors to scatter and live in the pockets of isolation. Um, that's from the back cover of Death Stranding mm. number one. Um, so I, the extinction event happens, or is trying to happen, and... Oh, God, what's her name is the extinction entity. And she's like, I mean, I can choose at any time to get rid of humanity, but I'm just hanging on. Yeah. It's, Entertain me, Sam Porter Bridges. It's man. I even forgot most of that. That story is atrocious. <laughs> 
I mean, I want. So, I, I thought you liked it a bit more. I'm. I, maybe it's just the gameplay that you liked a bit more. I love the gameplay. I like. I'm a huge oh, okay. into the gameplay loop and all that stuff. It's just like it felt too up its own ass. Oh. Um, yes. Even for even for Kojima. Oh um, yes, yes. And not in a. I don't think in a heady way. I think in a lazy way. I agree with that. Like, it's like. I'm not mad he did this because he has a huge ego. I'm mad he did this because it felt like he cut a corner. It was like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, of course it's, it's this. Because um, <laughs> there's mo- beach, everybody. Yeah, there's moments in that game are cool that are cool, like for sure. Del Toro's totally. character and all that stuff, and even the mama and the sister thing is neat. Like you retrieving the body and hiking it. I over. I I loved part of that story, and then there was part of that where I was just like, oh okay. <laughs> all right this is i this love is delivering we, pizzas we put a bow on that yeah uh, <laughs> the pizza one where you actually are delivering it to to troy baker right oh Isn't are that you the plot twist? I, I don't think i ever realized that because it, it's the bunker that you're getting like a bunch of really weird specific orders to uh at the in like the post game you can go there and it's whatever his organization is it's like their secret bunker and like you find a bunch of like logs by him Oh, wow. so I think it's like letting you believe that you were delivering pizzas to Troy Baker's character the entire time, which is very funny. I don't think I I don't think I ever realized that. Oh, fake fan. Fake fan. Yeah, you're right. You know what? <laughs> it's the end of the podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just scrolling through Hideo's Twitter to see if there's anything else because uh, I was just curious. Uh, well, while you do that, while you do that, let me give my two cents on uh, this statement by um, one. Norman Reedus. Uh, I personally think that this is either a miscommunication or Norman Reedus kind of not understanding the video game world as much. Uh, obviously, big name actors are used to being able to like what they can and can't talk about with the movie. Uh, you think of like a, a Tom Holland famously leaking so many things uh, that he should not be saying. <laughs> um, I th- think this kind of comes a similar scenario, but honestly, I think it's like, uh, if you remember, I think it was like five years ago, the voice actor for goofy. And this is not a joke <laughs> said, uh, Oh yeah. Kingdom hearts three is coming out like next year. And the world lost its mind because in his head, he had recorded all the voiceover lines. Yeah. And was like, okay, yeah. Video games. It'll be done next year. Great. And of course, it took like three more years for that game to come out. People were just like, God damn it, Goofy, you lied to us. Uh, but I, I think it's just the thing where like, hey, you know, these people are, are, are actors in a different way than video games. They don't understand necessarily how it works. I also, I, I know Kojima has kind of talked about doing another Death Stranding thing or a sequel or something. I don't think, I think at this point he is so free uh to do whatever i mean obviously there's a lot of speculation maybe xbox is gonna hire him out to make a game for them uh but i don't think he wants to get trapped in doing another series and of course like making one sequel isn't that but like with him being as he says 58 and having so much creative ideas i think he's gonna want to create something new and uh, I also want to see him <laughs> create something new because yeah. you, you, well, the, well, the world building in Death Stranding is interesting. I don't think the game as a whole is particularly uh, exciting or like ripe for a sequel. Um, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, with the Xbox stuff, I can see talks of a Death Stranding 2 after whatever he's doing next with... Mm-hmm. Um, Xbox, but I can also see Norman Reedus not knowing the ins and outs of video games exactly. and him just saying, exactly. oh, Kojima's talking to me again. Oh, it's going to be Death Stranding 2 when it could be completely also, something else because he just liked working there, with them. There's also the possibility that, uh, you know, this DLC that they did could have totally new stuff that he had to come in and record for that he could be just be like, oh, is this is True. this a sequel? Because, you know, like TV series or, or movies, like if, if you come in to record something else in your head, it's like, oh, this is a new thing. This is a new season, whatever it might be. Uh, and I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah. hey, I, I have I have uh, 
served Mr. Redis before. And uh, that's gross. We don't need to know about your prostituting. God games. damn it! <laughs> oh. Wait, have I have I talked about? Uh, uh, also, Norman Reedus's son came in one time to the restaurant I was working at. I, I, th- I can't remember if you told me or you told me on this podcast, but you can. I, I'll I t- keep it super brief. Point of the story is, dude gave his credit card to the server. I was bartending. The server came over to me. We're good buddies, and he was like, "Yo, this dude's last name is Reedus," and I was like, "What? Like, like Norman Reedus?" And we looked it up. Because, like, the kid's name was very odd. And I want to save the name to the end because it's a great punchline. Uh, and we we're like, holy shit, yeah, this is Norman Reedus' son. The kid's name is Mingus Reedus. Mingus. Mingus Reedus. What is that? Is that a real name? Which is maybe the most unfortunate name I've ever heard. That's uh, Mingus. Yeah, Mingus. M-I-N-G-U-S. That's Sorry, not to put you on blast, Mr. Edis. Hey, but he's going to be writing in news. about this. <laughs> you wrote down the credit card number, right? <laughs> oh, I should have. <laughs> Take a picture of it. Um, yeah, I didn't see anything else here on his Twitter other than him apparently very excited for the new James Bond movie and Dune. So mm. um, I that James Bond movie finally going to come out and probably still not make as much money if the pandemic had never happened yeah no which kind of sucks but you know what movies can take it down a peg uh folks that is going to be the episode today for chasing kojima if you have any hot hot kojima tips please don't hesitate to email me Uh, i believe it's will at subpixelfilms.com so definitely email me there um you can also tweet at me at hunt 270 on twitter or you can tweet at my good friend Zach. Zach, what is your Twitter handle? Uh, save data Zach. You know, I knew that. Um, I was thinking it's David's. That's the weird one that I could never remember. Dave uh, Seda. Dave Seda. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, he is. He is amazing. Um, folks, uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we will be back the next time there is some Kojima news or Ian annoys me enough to record another episode. Um, As always, thank you for joining me, Zach, and we will see you all in the stranding. Bye.